I just had the most disturbing dream. The people of Burkittsville turned into horrible creatures. I killed all of them, but then they transformed back into humans. I had no choice. I lost control of myself. I killed those people. I remember seeing the stranger. He was standing above me, looking down. God, I was dead. I was shot through the head. But the gun was in my hand. I wonder what it all means. This town must be really getting to me. I wish I'd just fled from the monsters, ran into the forest or something, so I wouldn't have been forced to kill them. I can't carry all my gear in town. I'll get it before I go into the woods. Hold it. Stop right there. Are you Sheriff Bowers? I know why you're here. Martinsburg's out of my jurisdiction. Check with the sheriff there. We've done that, thank you. But there's been no sign of Jenny since she vanished. We are completely out of leads, and my sister's getting desperate. So I decided to come here and see... And you think Rustin Parr took your niece? <sighs> Listen, lady. Eight children disappeared from this town. One of them is back home right now, staring at the corner of his room. The other seven we dug out of shallow graves in Parr's basement. We searched every corner of that house. There was nothing else there. Be on your way. Sheriff had a point, you know. All seven kids we found in Parr's basement were local kids. I'd like to see his house. The Parr place? Um, yeah. Well, you see, the day they sentenced Parr, a lot of folks, well, they got all worked up and went out to his house. Uh, burned it to the ground. They destroyed the house? Now, these people have been through hell this year. Now, I, I'm not excusing what they did, but tempers were running hot. Some of these people lost their children. And it's not like there was anything left out there anyway. We went over the entire place with a fine-tooth comb. We found everything we needed to put Parr away for good. <laughs> His trial was quick. Is there any way I could talk to the judge who presided? I've got some questions I'd like to ask. Well, that trial must have worn him out because he just, um, up and left without telling anyone. I came in and that sign was on the door. It's not really like him, but he's earned a few days off. The sheriff has proven less than helpful. He's on edge and openly hostile to me. The deputy, on the other hand, might be willing to help. I should talk to him when the sheriff isn't around. <sighs> that these people destroyed the crime scene is infuriating. There's no way that this backwater sheriff could have found the clues that I suspect littered that place. So much evidence lost. Damn fine cup of coffee. Welcome back, Miss Holiday. Sleep well last night? 
Oh, not really. I had the most disturbing dream. <laughs> Haven't we all? I doubt anybody in this town's getting much sleep lately. Can I get you something to eat? Just coffee, thanks. So, have you talked to the sheriff about your niece yet? I did, unfortunately. Ooh, I think I know what you mean. He's not a particularly jolly fellow to begin with. To be quite honest, sometimes he's even downright mean, especially to women. But he's been unusually cranky, even for him. Speak of the devil. Gretchen. Uh, hello yourself. Um, what can I get for you? The usual? You bet. Talk to you later, hon. Now's my chance to speak to the deputy alone. He obviously wanted to talk before, but the sheriff put a quick stop to that. Ma'am? Miss Holliday? Um, yes? Well, since the sheriff isn't here right now, I wanted to tell you. Well, I can't offer you much help, but this might be of some use. Charlie, what did I tell you about wasting your time with that woman? Listen, you sneaky broad. I knew as soon as you left the diner you were up to no good. This is your last warning. You'd best back off. Come on, Charlie. divert the sheriff's attention so I can talk to the deputy alone. But how? Excuse me? Oh, good Lord. Hello there. I'm sorry. I must have drifted off. I can return later if you like. No, no, don't rush off. I'm Suzanne Ascot. Can I help you? My name is Elspeth Holliday. I'm here in search of my missing niece. Oh, no. This nightmare is endless. Are you all right? <laughs> all right? How could I possibly be all right? Over half my students were slaughtered. My children. I know what's happened must have taken a terrible toll on you. I wish there was something I could do. You'll have to excuse me. I, I haven't been myself lately. No, uh, there's nothing you can do for me. Thank you, though. Oh, I'm terribly sorry about your niece. Why don't you just leave town? Get away for a while. If it were only that easy. But that's up to my husband. Your husband? Mm-hmm. Stephen Ascot, pastor of the church. I've asked him, begged him to move away, but he refuses. He says that without him, no one would be left in the town to appeal to God. Satan would swallow Burkittsville whole. But we've already lost eight of our beautiful children. Eight? Uh, I thought only seven died. Mm-hmm. Kyle Brody. Well, he isn't dead, but how could anyone say he's alive? Poor, poor boy. He'll never be the same. What's wrong with him? After he escaped from Parr. He became unreachable. He doesn't eat. He doesn't sleep. 
He doesn't talk. That's awful. He must have been severely traumatized. I just wish there was some way to pull those terrible memories out of his head. I do, too. Especially after a glimpse of what's in his mind. He drew this a few weeks ago. Some weird scribbles and symbols with the words, leave me alone. That is disturbing. Yes, I know. I almost stopped going by to check on him after I saw this. It's just so heartbreaking. Would you mind if I kept this? Well, if you want it. I know I'd be happy never to see it again. Would it be possible for me to see Kyle? That's not a good idea. He's not big on strangers anymore. He's not the only one. You could always try, though. I'd love to have your help if you think there's a way you can break through to him. The Brody house is out behind the hotel. Children Pa murdered accounted for half of the town's child population, and now it seems that the one survivor, a boy named Kyle Brody, is lost in a world of his own. The local school teacher, Suzanne Ascott, has been keeping track of Kyle's progress during his recovery from the abduction. She showed me one of the boy's drawings. There are strange symbols in the sketch that resemble alphabetic characters. Almost runic, but nothing I recognize. There might be something more to these markings. Perhaps Kyle saw these symbols at Ruston Pa's house. Well, if the townspeople hadn't burned the place to the ground, I could get samples and possibly translate the alphabet. Kyle Brody's house is behind the motel. I'll try to meet with him myself. How can I help you, ma'am? Mrs. Brody, I'm Elspeth Holliday. My sister... Yes, I've heard about you. And I am sorry for your loss, but you'll find no answers here. I'd like to speak with Kyle to see if he remembers anything about Jenny. You will do no such thing. Listen, Miss Holliday, I know the pain your family must be going through, but I don't know if my son will ever be the same. Some days he seems like he's making progress, and then he, he flips back away from me. It's a mother's worst nightmare. Since they found him in Paris, he's been like the walking dead. Oh, God, it rips my heart out to see him like this every day. Please, just go away. Just go. Don't bother my family anymore, for God's sake. We've been through enough. Goodbye, Miss Holiday. just met Kyle Brody's mother. She's in pretty bad shape, and the boy's even worse. He sits on his porch, staring blankly off into space and clutching a ragged teddy bear. I'm convinced now that Pa was practicing some form of black magic. The symbols in Kyle's sketch are too uniform to be random scrawlings. They must be characters of, of some sort of alphabet, something that burned into his memory. They have some similarity with a demonic scripture I've seen. But how would Rust and Pa have learned a demon's alphabet? Hello, where did you come from? Help me? Did Kyle draw this? I'd best keep this one to myself.
Good day. Can't take the chalk while she's watching. Hmm. Did you say something, Miss Holiday? Oh, just thinking out loud. Oh, I do that all the time. Oh, nice to see you again, Miss Holiday. Still interested in learning about our local legends? Absolutely. Uh, this book will reveal many things to you. As a single source, it doesn't constitute proof, but I have other volumes that verify its claims. Well, books can only explain so much, but thank you. I'm sure I'll find it fascinating. Finally, I found someone in this little town that doesn't get on my nerves. The town librarian, Peter Durant, is well-educated and quite helpful. He also seems to be the sole link to the real history of Berkitsville. I tried to instill some doubt in him, but he's rock-solid in his beliefs. He gave me a book entitled Frederick County Tales of the Supernatural. Mm, mostly superstitions and local folklore. The few entries that mention the Blair Witch don't offer anything beyond what Spookhouse has already gathered. I should leave this book with Mr. Durant. Is this everything that's been written concerning the Blair Witch? Believe any of it now? Uh-huh. Interesting, but hardly conclusive.
Still working hard to finish this story. Had a chance to see the sheriff yet? The sheriff doesn't seem interested in my case. Yeah, the par murders have taken a big toll on old Junior. A few weeks before the trial, somebody vandalized the school. Painted strange symbols all over it. Never found the culprit. Here's a copy of the police report. Darndest thing. We ran it in the paper, hoping someone would have some clues. But nothing ever turned up. Why a sketch and not a photograph? Sheriff won't buy a camera. Makes his deputy draw all the crime scenes. <laughs> He's as cheap as he is mean. Well, good old Charlie doesn't mind either. Well, that boy has some talent. He loves to draw. Of course, I have a camera, but they like to keep me away from their investigations as long as possible. Mr. Gaston gave me a police report concerning some strange symbols made on the school wall prior to the children's disappearance. Possibly a schedule of the children to be abducted. It's a police report on vandalism at the school. Hmm, this gives me an idea. I might be able to divert the sheriff's attention. I'm certain I can get the deputy out here by marking the walls like they were in this police report. Then I can get a chance to hear what he has to say. Hmm, what can I use to mark the walls? This will be perfect for causing a distraction. Just like the police report. If the deputy comes out to document this, I'll get a chance to speak with him privately. Now, let's see what develops. No, this time I'm going to see this writing with my own eyes. What's wrong with you, lady? Now's my chance. Wow, your timing is perfect. Mrs. Ascott just called about some more vandalism over at the school. 
I checked it out last time. This time, the sheriff's gone over to see for himself. Oh, I know. Uh, so what was it you were going to tell me? Uh, yes. Every other night, I pull guard duty on Parcel. And it's the damnedest thing. At least once a night, he wakes up screaming, Never give in. That mean anything to you? I don't know. But thanks for the information. I'll think about it. I wish there was more I could do to help. Well, actually, there is. Do you have a map that would lead me to Pa's house? You know, there's nothing left out there but smoldering wood. Yes, but I still need to see it for myself. Look, I'm sure we don't have much time before the sheriff gets back, and I can't waste it playing games. You seem like a good man, and I hope I can trust you. Trust me with what? I'm a doctor, working for a secret government agency that deals specifically with cases like Rust and Pa's. What? And what agency would that be? If I told you, it wouldn't be much of a secret, would it? <laughs> I suppose not. What about your missing niece? The missing niece is a fabrication, a cover story. It's important that you believe me now, Mr. Hobart. Call me Charlie. You know, Sheriff Bowers would lock you up if he heard the things you just told me. That's why I distracted him, so I could talk to you alone. You did that? Oh, jeez. That's not something you want to let Sheriff Bowers find out about. I know, but I had to take that chance. Please, Charlie, I need that map. The sheriff would have my hide if he found it missing. But I tell you what, we just won't tell him, will we? I gotta warn you, though. The map isn't complete. It'll get you close, but you'll have to find the house on your own once you get there. The path leading into the forest is behind the school. Thank you, Charlie. I'm ready to go into the woods now. I'd better take my gear with me. At least now I have a map to what's left of Pa's house. The deputy told me the most peculiar thing. He said that every night Pa wakes up screaming, never give in. Hmm, I should think further on this. I'm ready to go into the woods now. I better take my gear with me. Miss Holiday. Hello. Enjoying your stay so far? Well, I might fare better if I had a telephone in my room. Oh, well, you see, this is a small town. They only got two phones. One's in the sheriff's office. The others at the school, in case of emergencies. We got a couple of telegraph machines, though. I got one right here. That will do. Can you send a wire now? Suppose so. Where to? This address, please. Ready. Have some leads. Stop. Tell S to stay home. Stop. Love, Elspeth. Stop. All done. Thank you.
finally to Pa's house and perhaps visit Coffin Rock as well. The map grows awfully vague this far from town. I'm close to Pa's house, but I'll have to fill in my own details from here. I smell burnt wood. Pa's house must be nearby. I found Pa's house. Well, what's left of it anyway. The people from Beckersville were quite thorough in demolishing this place. I was hoping that some of the interior would have survived, but they've nearly leveled the place. But there were markings on the wall. I can just barely make them out. Honestly, if I'd only been able to see these before the house was burned down. Perhaps if I wipe some of this grime away... Oh, it's no use. The walls are too burnt. Where did my kerchief go? Huh, it couldn't have just disappeared. Well, there's nothing more I can do here. Time to move on. There's still one other place around here I want to see. According to legend, the Blair Witch has made a number of sacrifices on Coffin Rock. I was told it was near Pa's house.
Something very strange has happened. I've entered an area of unnatural darkness. I heard strange sounds and saw some sort of movement. Oh, things seem to be back to normal now. I'll need to analyze my recordings of those odd noises. This is strange. Someone has placed piles of stones and odd stick figures here. They appear to be roughly in the shape of a human. Perhaps it's ceremonial or symbolic. I don't know if these stones have anything to do with what I just experienced, but there seems to be a deliberate purpose to their arrangement. If there is witchcraft involved, there's no telling what sort of booby traps are attached to these things. I'd best leave everything as is. My senses aren't picking up anything, no ghosts anyway, but this is definitely a place that has witnessed evil. I wish I could bring the whole team out here, oh, but it would obviously attract too much attention. There just might be something in these woods. I certainly can't explain that brief darkness. I'll have to look into that when I get back into town. Something powerful is hiding in these woods. Hmm, Spook House requires more than just a bad feeling to warrant a full investigation. Unless I actually see anything, this case is closed. I need to get back to my hotel room. I'll report to Spook House that I've found nothing. Right, back to the hotel. I'll let Spook House know I've found nothing. That should amuse Stranger. I don't remember the path turning like this before. This doesn't correspond to the map. Here again? Well, now I'm positive I've been walking in circles. Admit it, Elspeth. You are lost. How are you going to find your way back now?
Tama. Welcome to my home. Please come in. Thank you. I'm Elspeth Holiday. Call me Askaya Gigoy. In these woods, you should hold your name close to your heart. When someone knows your true name, they have power over you. But didn't you just tell me your name? No. I told you what you may call me. My true name. I keep to myself. Uh, I see. Worry not. I will protect your name. I followed a white owl here. Nay, Asja. The white owl is a symbol of great wisdom. It only reveals itself to those who are truly worthy. You must tell me now what it is you seek. I'm in search of my niece, Jenny. There is no need for you to lie. I don't know what you mean. You have no sister. You have two brothers, one elder, one younger. How do you know that? I told you, names are powerful things. All right. I'm here in search of the Blair Witch. I see. And do you truly believe in such things as witches? I've seen witchcraft, actually performed some myself. Yes. I see that. I can also sense that you prefer not to rely on any powers beyond your own. You open your heart only to what your eyes and ears tell you. That's true, but all I've encountered here are myths and legends. All myths and legends are rooted in truth. I'm not so sure. It may be merely a grain of truth, but it is there always. Are you saying the Blair Witch exists? I've heard the stories of your Blair Witch. I've known these woods for many years, and never have I seen such a witch. What have you seen? When the white man settled these lands, he brought his own evils with him. But this land was not without evil even before the arrival of the white man. Even before my people lived here. This is Givnur, or Sight. While you wear it, you may see signs of the evil that was here even before this forest. Give no? Mm, from an ancient alphabet, much older than your own language. Given and Ur. Hmm, oily. That is the Akha. The Twana must be covered with Akha, or it is only a bundle of sticks. What's it made of? It is Akha, nothing more. Now, return to your people. Give Nur will allow you to find your way back. They change these woods. The forest twists under your feet, causing you to walk in circles. With Give Nur, you may find your way out. But take heed. There are forces stronger than Give Nur, and its sight might not always work. Why are you helping me? Because you are in need of help. And you are the only person who can help me. Can't you give me a straight answer? You, of all people, should understand the importance of keeping secrets. Is that not your task? Hiding the truth from those who would suffer by knowing? How could you know that? Knowing the truth is simple. Knowing what to do with it is not. Is there anything else you can tell me? I can tell you many things, but you have to know which questions to ask. Come back to me once you've learned more about this place. You'll have questions then, and I will have answers. Thank you for your help. We help each other. I've just met a peculiar native man named as Gaia Gagoy. He claims, well, he said many things, extremely puzzling. He knew some very specific things about me that he couldn't possibly have known. He displays authentic perception. He warned me to keep my name secret. Usually, though, such precautions are encountered with demonology, demons. He implied that the evil that occupies these woods existed before Ellie Kedward or any other white settlers. So even before the Blair Witch, there was something dark in this forest. I'll have to check the library for Native American folklore about demons in these hills. Hmm, I wonder if the Blair Witch made some pact with a local demon.
That reminds me, the Givna necklace looks similar to the characters in Kyle Brody's drawing. I'll have to look into this alphabet more tomorrow. Oh, night has fallen. I've got to get back to town. I've just killed a creature that I can only describe as a monstrous black dog. I fail to see any connection, however, between this beast and the Blair Witch. Dogs like this aren't traditionally familiar to witches. This wasn't here before. Some sort of structure. Not physical, but I can still see it. Oh, the Givna necklace as Gaia gave me. As much as I hate the thought of trekking back out here tomorrow, it's getting a little too late for comfort. I can follow my map back to town.
trees are blocking my way. The creature I just destroyed was enormous. Oh, here's hoping there aren't any more that size around here. Finally, the path back to town. Maybe I can get back in time to get a couple hours sleep before dawn. There is no way I could have missed that before. Either it wasn't there, or I couldn't see it because I didn't have this amulet.